y'all, it's Melissa of the blog Melly Sews and the designer at Blank Slate Patterns. And today we're talking all about how to finish knit necklines. We'll be talking about two different ways to do a neck band and how to do a neck binding. And as a bonus, if you watch till the end of the video, I'm going to have a link to another video that shows you yet another way to do a knit neckline. So let's get started. Okay, let's first talk about putting in a ribbed neckline. This is one of the most common ways to put in a neckband. You use ribbed knit because it has more stretch than typical knit, and also because when you put ribbed knit in around a curve, let me show you here, the properties of that ribbed knit allow it to stay flat on this inner edge while the outer edge is stretching because of the way those ribs kind of make like wheel spokes to keep it flat on the inner edge of the neckline. So let's talk about how to put this together. First, you're going to want to mark quarter points on your neckline. So we want to mark the center front and the center back. To do that, I always just match up the shoulder seams and then add a pin at center front and center back. Now you also want to mark quarter points all around the neckband. I start with the ends that are sewn together and then fold it in half. And so this right here will be center front. And then when I put those two together, the seam and the center front, then I can mark the other quarters of the neckline with a pin. And now it's just a matter of matching this up to the points on here. So center front, center back, and then these are going to match up to the shoulders. Now you might notice that the front neckline on this is deeper than the back neckline, and that's pretty typical, especially on women's t-shirts. And um, you actually do are going to end up with the same amount of neckband in front and in back, and you want that because the steeper a curve is, like this little area right here, the more you want to stretch your neckband in that particular area to make sure that it lays flat. If I curve it and I barely stretch the outer edge, you see how it starts bubbling like that? We don't want that, so we actually are going to stretch it even more right there, and that is going to help us keep that neckline flat. So, I like to go and then match the pins here, and I like to use pins, but you can certainly use clips or something else if you'd like. And then, I'm going to match this to the shoulder seam. And just a note on shoulder seams, I like to press my seam allowances towards the back of the shirt when I am um, matching up the neckband. Okay, I've got this all pinned in, and you'll notice that the neckband is smaller than the neckline of the shirt. So what I'm going to do is, as I sew each quarter, you can see how much more shirt there is than neckband here, I'm going to stretch the neckband only until the shirt remains flat there. And then I'm going to stitch between those two points. And what that'll do is that'll help create that nice flat curve with the bound, um, sorry, with the neckband. Okay, I've got my machine set for a stretch stitch. You can also use a zigzag. And um, I've got this lined up with a half inch seam allowance because that's what this particular pattern called for. I'm starting at the center back and I'm just going to stitch around. Okay, let's take a look at that rib knit neckband. So here it is stitched in and I've gone ahead and pressed it as well. And you can see that that curve is accommodated nicely and still lays flat. The only problem with this is that if you look at the inside here, you can see that the seam allowance does not want to lay flat. It's going to want to curl up like that, which can be irritating when you're wearing it. So what you'd want to do is with your machine stitch with that seam allowance pressed down, you'd want to stitch another line about a quarter inch from the edge of the collar, still using a stretch stitch, but just to keep that all flat. Now the next type of neckline I want to talk about is what happens if you are sewing something out of jersey knit and you want to use self-fabric neckband, meaning you want the neckband to be the same fabric as the shirt. But since you weren't sewing with rib knit, how should you do this? Okay, so the process of sewing it in is generally the same. 
The thing that's different that I want to talk to you about is whether to cut that knit neck band, um, knit jersey neck band, on the cross grain or on the bias grain. And I've actually got a couple of pieces of paper here that are going to help me demonstrate what I'm talking about. So if you don't understand the difference between knit jersey and rib knit, I'm going to link a video here at the end where I explain and I show you how those stitches are formed. And I would suggest that you go check that video out because then this explanation makes more sense. So I've got this paper here. And if you imagine that these lines that I have drawn are the columns of knit stitches on the right side of the knit, then imagine what happens when you fold your knit neck band and you fold it wrong sides together, which is what I've got going on here. This is a knit neck band cut on the cross grain here. So there's the, the cross grain. Um, when I try to put this in, um, you'll see that like this column right here goes straight down right there. And what that means is if I have a curve like this, it's pretty difficult to get the neckband to go in flat without bubbling up around the curve. Okay, even if I stretch a lot on the outer edge, that inner edge still wants to bubble up. And that's because the jersey knit doesn't have those rib knit spokes like the rib knit um, neckband that we did earlier. So one of the ways I like to solve this um, is to actually cut your knit neck band on the bias. I don't know a lot of people that do this, but I just find that it gets better results when I do it this way. So I want you to imagine, same thing, it's, this is the bias cut neck band, and that now I've folded it in half, wrong sides together, and I've highlighted this pink line here so that it's easier to see. So you can see that one end of the pink line is here, and then the other end is over here. So what that means is that each part of the outer part of the knit neck band, when it's cut on the bias, is pulling in opposite directions. And because of that, that helps make this edge lay flatter. So I'll show you here. This is the, the bias cut neck band. And when I pull it around this curve, I don't have quite the amount of bubbling. Now it does still want to stand up a little bit, but that presses out really easily. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch, these, stitch this one in, and then you can see what this looks like when it's finished. Again, you stitch it just like I did with the rib knit neck band before. So here we go. This is the bias neck band, and you can see that this one, even though it's self fabric, lays in really nice and flat. And because I did this one on a serger, which you absolutely don't need, that other one was done on a regular machine, um, this was done on the serger, which means that seam allowance is a little less and it tends to lay flatter than um, the rib knit that I showed you before. But if it wasn't laying flat, you could still come back and like an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch away from the neckline seam, add another seam with a stretch stitch and make sure that lays flat. Okay, the third type of knit neckline that we're going to talk about is actually not a neck band. This is going to be binding. And what the difference is, is that a neck band, let me show you here, a neck band is actually going to add a little bit to the neckline. So you sew it in and it raises the neckline a little bit because of the band width. Um, if you are doing a neck binding, you're not going to be adding any difference to the neckline. It's still going to be the exact same height and shape as your original pattern. And sometimes this is preferable. It depends on the pattern you're using and the purpose you're doing this. But um, a knit binding is going to go around the neckline like this. And you'll see it's like going to be the exact same as the original neckline. It does not stick up above it. So, in order to do a neckline binding, you want it to be quarter marked, so we are going to do the pins, and you want it to be flat in one layer. The other neck bands I was installing, you notice that I pressed them first, and um, this one I'm not going to because we are going to press it after we stitch it. So same process here where I've quartered the neck band, I'm going to quarter the neck line, and then we'll pin those together. Okay, there we go. I've got it pinned in, and I'm going to sew all the way around that neck edge. 
Now one other thing, this is not cut on the bias. Because neck binding in this method usually ends up so thin, it's okay to cut just on the cross grain and use it that way. You're not really going to have those bubbling up issues that you might have with a neck band that has a little more width. Okay, I've got my knit neckline binding in and I'm going to be using a half inch seam allowance and I've got a stretch stitch so I'm just going to stitch around now. Let's take a look at the bound neckline that we're doing. You can see that, first of all, I cut the neckband a little too short, which is why we've got the puckering here. But since this is just a sample for this video, I'm going to go ahead and finish showing you the technique here. Take the seam allowance here and you want to wrap the binding around the neckline there and then you're going to pin it all the way around. You're going to want to stitch again right next to the neckline. Do that with a stretch stitch. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine and we've got the bound neckline here. So let me show you what the last step is to completing this after you've stitched it down the second time. You're going to turn to the wrong side of the fabric and then you're going to start trimming off this excess fabric. Now I chose to do a half inch seam which has resulted in a half inch binding on the neckline. However, you can do this as thick or as thin as you want. Um, if you like three quarter inch better, if you like one quarter inch better, you can do those. Be very careful when you are cutting this not to cut through your shirt. Okay, so here we go. Here's what a bound neckband looks like. It's um, going to be the exact same. It's just that seam, the edge of the fabric. I can feel it right there. The seam is covered and then it's covered and trimmed on the inside as well. Okay, let's talk about how you determine the length of a neckband. Now, if you're using a pattern and it has a piece for you, then go ahead and start with that. But even then, sometimes things have to be adjusted depending on the type of knit you are using. In order to not get these puckers like this, you want to make sure that you measure the neckline on the seam line, not on the edge of the neckline, because this line here is longer than this line on the edge of the neckline. So measure on the seam line and then you want to multiply that number by about 80 or 90 percent. So by somewhere between 0.8 and 0.9. Um, rule of thumb, I usually use about 0.85 and then I'll round that off to the nearest quarter inch, that number. Um, and that's when I do the math. Make sure that you do the math because this one I just eyeballed and you can see the results of that and that's not what you want. So again, 80 to 90 percent, and then if you're having to stretch a whole bunch when you're pinning your neckband in or you're binding on, that's a clue that it's too short and it's going to pucker like this. If you are barely having to stretch it at all, that's also a problem because if it's too long, it'll stand up, particularly around the shoulders where it will almost look like a turtleneck. So you want to make sure that you get it the right amount that you're going to have to stretch it a little bit, but not too much. And that way it will lay nice and flat.